Hi, my name is Bill Raines. I'm a professor of statistics at the University of Kentucky. Over the past 30 years, I've had the opportunity to experiment with many different structural models for large lecture classrooms. My favorite and current model is what I refer to as student-centered. While this evolved from a flipped classroom I used for several semesters, it's not lecture-free. Let me explain. First, note that my classroom is designed to group 132 students into 22 tables of six each. Students are permanently assigned to those tables, usually by the end of the second week of classes. What does a typical week look like in my classroom? Let's suppose I'm teaching on a two-day, 75-minute per session schedule, say on Tuesday and Thursday. Tuesdays are devoted to student activities. The activities themselves vary depending on what fits the overall choreography. We may have a set of prompts that the groups work through, or we may be collecting data at the tables from many experiments. During the activity time, my TA and I work the room going from table to table answering questions. There are still 132 students in the room, but it feels more like you're helping 22, and the students do a surprisingly effective job helping each other. After Tuesday, readings are assigned for Thursday, and before class on Thursday, students have to complete an online quiz over those readings. The first part of the class on Thursday reviews the big ideas in the readings and is used to make or remake deeper connections that students may have missed while preparing for class. Homework activities are assigned each week and are typically due on Canvas by the end of the day on Friday. The last half of the class on Thursday is then set aside for students to get started on the homework activities, either by working directly on those activities or on similar ones we've designed. Again, the TA and I work the room while the students work on the activities. I've found this keeps the students more invested in their own learning than with other structural models I've used. This combination of active learning, peer discussion, and real-time feedback allows me to gently keep much of the responsibility for learning on the student. The course I teach places a lot of emphasis on student response. Homework activities typically require short answers as well as occasional computations. In my large lecture, I'm faced with the usual challenges of how to get all the grading done, as well as how to communicate the results of the grading back to the students. There are many things that work, but I'm now a big fan of peer grading. Let me explain why I like it and how I facilitate it. I have used two automated methods of peer grading. One is called calibrated peer review, often just referred to as CPR, which is a utility out of UCLA. For each homework assignment, students are electronically calibrated, assigned peer documents to grade, and then required to grade their own assignments as well. Each step of this process is scored automatically as a part of the overall assignment grade. Of course, I had to build all the calibration materials and rubrics for my course into the UCLA sponsor site. There is a learning curve for instructors and students to familiarize themselves with CPR, and some students struggle initially with the complexity, but the payback on that time investment can be excellent. In the last year, I have replaced CPR with the peer review tool on Canvas, and have been quite pleased. While this tool has far fewer bells and whistles than CPR, it's much easier for students and instructors to use. That was a good trade-off for me. Why do I like peer grading? Students will from time to time suggest it's because I'm too lazy to grade submitted activities myself. I hope most are kidding when they say that. In truth, my intent is much more serious. Even when I could manage to grade huge numbers of submissions myself, it became clear over time that students weren't always looking at the results. I really felt like the learning loop had not been completed. I wanted students to know what was valued about the assignment and to see suggestions for what reasonable answers might have been. By using rubric-driven peer grading, I'm able to gently force an encounter between the student and a rubric and hence to effectively communicate what was valued. This is part of the assignment in my class and full credit for the assignment is not possible if the assigned peer review is not completed. I consider the closing of that learning loop as a critical part of the homework assignment. 